A mod that allows the world to sit in dystopian chaos, a world where everything can go wrong, will go wrong, and somehow still manages to surprise you. To me, that sounds like the perfect mod to end off Spooky Month. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. And today we're going to be hopping into the Red Flood mod. I thought to myself, what's the best kind of mod that I can play to end Spooky Month with my last video before Halloween? And after looking around, I thought it has to be the Red Flood mod with the weird shenanigans and, and just the general dystopian nature of it all. I felt it had to be done without a doubt. Now, taking that all into consideration, sure, it's a dystopian setting, but how can I make this a horror? How can I make this scary? Well, let's just think, a recipe for disaster, a scary world, a dystopian world with France. <laughs> you can't get scarier than France. <laughs> When in doubt, use the true horror of the world, which is France. No shade, pure love. <laughs> Without further ado, I want to jump into this mess. However, before I do, I will say this. Don't forget to, of course, to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We upload content here on the channel every single week, and we cover as many different Hoi4 mods as possible, from brand new to brand old, and uh, different mods from the well-known ones to the very unknown ones. If that sounds like your cup of tea, drop a sub, drop a like, and let's jump on in as avant-garde. Okie dokie, so starting off looking at our focus tree, I was thinking to myself, hmm, how can I make this more cursed and more horrifying? Um, and I've, I've found two ways to do so. One, I can I can either turn <laughs> France into an Islamic caliphate, um, or I can go down the route and make them tribal, tribal, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not peasants, no. Tribal pagans, that's the word I'm looking for. Tribal pagans, or I can make them go back into the Gaulic or Gallic Celts. I don't know which one to go for. I'm going to toss it up between a three. I'm just going to do like a ip dip do kind of situation and see where we end up. And after playing the very serious law abiding game of ip dip do, we have ended up with our result. We are not going the Islamic Caliphate. We are not going for Gallia. We are going for the Celtic, the Celtic Druid pagan route and that means we're gonna be going through the focuses like hate the cities and end of catholic 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 domination or uh, tribal democracy i love all of these but that's what we're gonna do so let's go ahead and complete our first focus so after a little while we have now started the process of a celtic state and because of that we have now changed our name and changed our party leader antonin has stayed the same but we are now being led by the neo-folkism party and we are also called Gaul or Gaul uh, uh, uh. I I can't just Gaul uh. <laughs> We're not Gaul, we're Gaul uh. <laughs> So although I can do this, I want to hold off just because it really does damage my construction speed and factory output. And I'm gonna come over here and just keep doing this to get to this. Where is it? Here. Because this will give me civvies and mill factories and organization and multi uh, monthly multi uh, population and recruitable population. This is just an incredible focus all around. So I'm just gonna keep grinding until I get that done first. Right oh, okay, so now in the year of 1939 and things are getting a little bit spicy. Why is it spicy? Essentially what happened is because we are allied with Fume and we do have them as part of our faction, they called us in for help when the Italians came knocking. That being the case and being Mother Gaul of all Gaulia, we're going to abide by that and we are just going to go absolutely ham. I don't know how ham we're going to go ham, but we're going to go porky. And after a very successful campaign with both our East and Western armies, Italy has fallen to fume, led by Filippo Tommaso Marinetti. And if I can, I'm gonna try and puppet them. If not, keeping them as an ally can also be cool, but uh, ideally I do want them as a strong friend rather than a problem down the line. I'm also not sure what to expect in this land of horror, so I am preparing the best that I can. I've built up a nice little defensive wall against the Germans, and since the Austrians just canceled our non-aggression, I don't know what to expect from them. I'm gonna improve relations and hopefully they decide to be chill but uh, I don't know whether chill exists in the Austrian dialect. Well, that's certainly something to worry about. Um, the Germans have just gone after the Austrians, and there's not only that, Anna Segers is is making me a little bit unnerving. I mean, if I if I just, if where can, I need to find her troops, where are our troops? I mean, just look at these troops, okay? I've sent an attache to Austria to find out, and these troops, I mean, look at that uniform. Normally when a German uniform wears black and has a red arm on the band, or a red band on the arm, it doesn't normally mean something good is happening. <laughs> I just... 
Right, so according to my logic, right, she has between 43 and 84 divisions. I have only 48, 50. I need more troops. I need to get my equipment sorted ASAP. I need to get these mill factories pumping like no one's business so that I can just absolutely butt shock. Give them a surprise butt sex and uh, just completely blitz through Luxembourg and Saarbrück and, and just catch them by surprise. Oh, I need to get rid of the Germans ASAP. I don't care about the Spanish. I don't care about the Brits. I just need to get rid of the Germans. They make me unnervy. And it's finally nearly time. Look Looking at our logistics, we are now only 236 days away from getting good amounts of artillery. But on top of that, we are only 57 days away from having infantry equipment, something that we are in absolute dire need of. The second I get that, I'm building another 24 stack army and we are absolutely going for Berlin. Especially now that they're, you know, halfway through Austria, they're also going after, uh, I was about to say Sweden. Oh my god, it's not Sweden, you absolute moron. Switzerland, they're going after Switzerland. <laughs> Also in other parts of the world, we have the Spanish Civil War is slowly but surely concluding with the National Front coming out on top, it seems. And all the way over here in Russia, they have finally united and become the Russian Empire. Um, and they are at war with... Oh, I feel like I've seen this episode before. <laughs> But as you can see, the Russians are just on a bit of a mad one going after anyone and everyone trying to establish themselves as a dominant nation. Uh, which means the second I finish Germany, I'm going to have to take out the Russians. Jesus Christ. Well, it seems like we're not going to get our ideal fairy tale ending where we're fully geared up. The uh, the Germans have just come knocking. France at war again. What a tragedy. Indeed it is. The world rent asunder. A sea of blood and crazy music in the background. Well... If they hadn't already, Germany really have bit off more than they can chew because not only are they now at war with the Swiss and the Austrians, but they're at war with us and they're also at war with all of my buddies. <laughs> so without further ado, vive les France, vive les Gaulle, let's get the ball rolling. Oh Germany, little Germany, my good little friend mon ami Allemand, you are about to go night night because I have just caught you with your pants down. You may have me in some parts but <laughs> and halfway through our lovely little German campaign, we have completed a new focus, Compromise with Dorjere. And it gives us a little bit of an option. We can choose what we can do faction-wise. I feel like I'm going to go Reactionaries and Polyarchy. What the hell is Polyarchy? That's a new blooming word. Okay, so looking at Polyarchy, the party is known as the CIAR, or Comité Invisible d'Action Révolutionnaire, which I think translates to something along of the Invisible Committee of Revolution Reaction, which kind of sounds cool, so we're going to go for that. And after a long campaign I finally did it I finally crushed the Germans now I as you can see here we do have the majority of the peace talks now granted everything's down to one star because I am using player led just in case but I did do all the legwork Austria did well um, but it was mainly holding their territory and pushing into Hungary I'm not going to give them any bonus points for dealing with Germany so what I'm going to do I feel like I'm going to take most of Germany for myself and then pop it some and then I'll do something funky with Austria I don't know I'll show you guys what I'd end up doing and that's your beloved peace deal. We managed to walk away with most of Germany. I puppeted the Germans and had them become the German state owned underneath Otto Braun. We also puppeted this part of Denmark here, being led by the dude who looks like he belongs on the bird's eye fish fingers box. Then Sweden also walked away with this part of Norway and they also walked away with this part of Denmark. Down in the south, there's obviously Austria down here. They managed to take this part of Hungary and uh, that's just about it. However, the fun does not stop there. As you can see, the Russians are being dommed by all of the people they try to start to do. Boop, 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 boop. They're being dominated by everyone they try teaming up on to take out. And then there's also this, the Italian Combine. Now, Fume decided to embrace the idea of becoming a united Italian Combine and during the war, they got invaded by Yugoslavia. Now, I'm going to be honest here. I'm not going to abandon my brother. I'm not going to abandon my brother in arms, my fratelli. Um, I'm I'm going to go down and help them out somehow. Oh yeah, forgot about that. It turns out I'm not going to be able to keep the territory for myself at all because although we can do this, you know, release Bavaria, Schleswig, uh, Schleswig Holstein. Good God, German's difficult. But then there's this. I made a decision not too long ago about Fidus, and I can give him Germany, and I think that's kind of what I have to do. So um, bye bye territory. I'm going to stabilize Germany. Oh, if only that Russia declaring on Ukraine was not bad enough. Oh, this video is becoming a little bit too spicy. I <laughs> Okay, well, I wasn't really hoping for this. It's just happened. I was wanting to spend my time in peace, building up, building up, but no, Britain has come knocking. Another negative point of this is it's not just Britain, but their whole damn faction, which means I could be facing Greece, 
Egypt, the Netherlands, as well as Canada. And you know what? I cannot be bothered to deal with this, but I'm going to anyway. Oh, God. Okay, so we finally managed to push them out of Northern Europe. Luckily, the Irish Republic hasn't gone to war with Northern Ireland just yet, so I can keep them as a safe point of invasion. Also, on top of that, what I've done, I've put my guys here on garrison, so I haven't got to worry too much, and then I'm just going to wait until I've finished building my anti-air so I can just stop being bombarded and spend the next couple of years just build and build and build and build, and then hopefully by maybe 43, I'll be able to take a nice comfortable crossing across the, I was about to say cross the ocean, no, across the channel and uh, go and pay London a visit, but it's all just a waiting game. I need to deal with Yugoslavia first somehow. Righto, so fast forward here into the year of 1946. We are quite a few years into the future. We finally managed to beat Yugo, beat Albania, beat Bulgaria, because this was all one big unit. The Italians got them and uh, they dealt this piece till these are all now puppets. Now marching over to the Brits, I've been silently building up my armies, as you can see. I also went out and got full stack of Marines and I'm just gonna absolutely blitz Dover. Thanks to my radar stations as well, I can have a look at the stations over there and uh, it's all colonial troops. I don't know why they're using colonials to, to garrison their land. Most of their main troops are down here in Africa. I'm hoping that means <laughs> That means Britain's going to be a little easier, but I've got my troops ready to roll. Naval invasion time it is. There we go. And with the sheer number of air support landing, um, I feel like I feel like this is ours. If we can just get that 99, 99, yes. And come on, boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground. Bing, 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 There we go. <laughs> And just like that, we are gravy. I still have my air support, although uh, they are panicking now and rerouting everything to me. My marines are just going in. We do have them outnumbered, and I have a second army on the way. I feel like this is Britain done. If I can just get Britain done, they are completely game over because they're the only major nation in their whole faction. The quicker I can get this done, the quicker I can end this campaign. And there we go. Without further ado, it is time for our beloved peace deal. And you know what? Without even messing around straight off the bat, Northern Ireland goes to Ireland themselves. And then as for Britain, I'm going to release some nations. I'm going to go ahead and liberate. Where are they? I want to liberate these guys. I want to liberate Scotland and I want to liberate Wales. Why? Because if you remember correctly, part of our focus tree was for our Gallic nations to be released. Now I'm going to go ahead and just clean up this piece still, try and get things all nice and fancy, and I suppose I'll see you guys very, very soon when this peace deal is finished. And there you have it, your wonderful peace deal. We managed to take the Netherlands, and we also took the Dutch East Indies as well. Uh, we also released Scotland, or as they're known here, as State State Liber Liberalac na Halba. Um, my, my, I'm going to be honest, my Gaelic, my Gaelic is just awful. Um, <laughs> Wales as Wales, we also have this part of Ireland was given back to Irish Republic and we took Cornwall but kept Britain as a puppet or England as a puppet and we now have the glorious Republic of Albion. It's a shame that there's no actual leader but I feel like that's a pretty cool thing to have. I also gave the Caribbean territories from Britain over to the Caribbean puppet along with some West African territories over to Sudan but that's all there is really. It's 1946 and there's all, the, all that's left to do is you know fix up the Aden, maybe go to War of America that I don't really see a point to deal with, maybe expand Quebec I don't know, but whether it's 1946 and there's no real expansion of my tree, I don't feel like there's anything else I can do here. So that's where I'm going to end it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Again, if you have enjoyed, don't forget to, of course, click the like and subscribe button. Every little helps. And I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, this last video for Spooky Month. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing Halloween in two days from now. I think it's two days from now. And uh, thank you very much. Till, till then, I'll see you next time and uh, have a good one, guys. All the best. And I'll see you around. Ta-da!